Introducing the Bite Me Cannabis Club. The Bite Me Cannabis Club aims to be an inclusive online space for cannabis lovers. Whether you're simply curious about how cannabis can improve your life or you're fully seasoned, there's always more to learn. When you join the Bite Me Cannabis Club, you'll have access to like-minded people interested in cannabis, monthly workshops, live Q&As, recipes and recipe swaps, digital cookbooks, a fully functional chat feature, and a whole lot more. For a limited time, it's only $5 a month with a 30-day free trial so you can try it out and see if it's right for you. This isn't just another Facebook group or confusing Discord channel. I carefully chose a platform that offers a clear, uncluttered, and seamless community experience. See for yourself. Join today. Say hello. I can't wait to connect with you there. Join the Bite Me Cannabis Club today. Link in your podcast app. episode, we talk about how to do the pot with Ellen. Welcome to Bite Me, the show about edibles where I help you take control of your high life. I am your host, Marge, and thank you for being here. I'm so grateful that you've lent me your ears so you can have a listen in on this fantastic conversation that I had with Ellen. Now, before we get into today's episode, just a few things I wanted to mention. First of all, I want to give a big shout out to Liam from Vermont who emailed me recently. We were chatting about gummies and I just wanted to say hello to Liam and thank you for sending me that email. Next, I also wanted to mention that if you're out there, perhaps making gummies like Liam or making any other delicious edibles, perhaps you had a chance to try the Canna Jammy Jam from last week's episode that is found on the How to, How to Do the Pot website. No matter what edibles you're making, you want to know how potent they are, especially as we get into a holiday season where you may be gifting more edibles than you would be otherwise. And what better way to do it than have a accurate and efficient and clearly put together calculator. Well, I have great news. I think I mentioned it before. I believe I did. We, I've been working on a new calculator for the website. I shouldn't say I have been. I have hired someone out to do this because it's a little more complicated on the back end than I have time or inclination for. But I had a new calculator developed that would be a little more clear, easier to use, and give you accurate results. So I hope you go check it out. It's free to use. Anybody can go over to the website and find it under the resources section. And I just hope you make use of it so that you don't accidentally overdose anybody that you care about. So please make use of it. And feedback is always welcome. It seems to me that it should be pretty clear to use. But of course, When you're working on these types of things, you stare at it and you stare at it and you stare at it. And sometimes you can easily miss something pretty obvious. So if you find anything, any glitches in the matrix, what have you, please let me know. Um, I welcome any feedback on that. And if you're finding it helpful or useful, I love to hear that too. So go check that out as well. Now, today's conversation with Ellen was wonderful. She's such a lovely human being and her podcast, How to Do the Pot, has been around since 2019. So what she's trying to do with this podcast is to demystify cannabis for women in particular. In 2021, this is from her website, more than 80 million women over the age of 21 have access to legal cannabis. Adult use is legal in 17 states in the US and of course now legal in Canada and in Mexico. And medical use is legal in 37 states. But do you still have questions? Founded in 2019 by Ellen Scanlon and April Pride, How to Do the Pot is a pioneering audio-first cannabis education platform for women because weed has always been sold through word of mouth. And I'm just going to let us get right into this interview. I think you're really going to get something from it. And if there's a woman in your life that you care about, whoever she may be, she may be very interested in this In this podcast and in the website. There's lots of information on the website as well, as you'll learn from this interview. And it doesn't matter. Is she kind of curious? Is she super into weed and knows quite a bit? She can probably learn something from this, from Ellen's podcast. So have a listen and enjoy this conversation with Ellen of How to Do the Pot. All right. Today, everyone, I am joined by Ellen of How to Do the Pot. And I just want to say thank you for taking the time to come join me today, Ellen. 
And why don't we start out with by you just telling us about how to do the pot and why you started this podcast? Sure. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here and be talking to your audience of uh, very curious cannabis eaters. I love it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, well, I I got into podcasting because cannabis is really hard to reach the right people easily. Um, every state is different. Every country is different. But podcasts reach everyone. And so it was kind of as simple as that. You know, what's a discreet way to reach women really all across the world who are curious about cannabis and give them access to the information that I'm learning in California, talking to people in New York, talking to people in Illinois, in Canada, um, and and do it in a seamless way. So that's how I got into podcasting. It was um, not, you know, we joke that... Um, cannabis and podcasting are growing so fast, but at least podcasting is legal. <laughs> and so um, there is, there is that. Um, but it's been an exciting ride. The first episode of How to Do the Pot premiered uh, in 2019, and we just celebrated our 100th episode. Yes, I actually just listened to episode number 103 the other day. And that Thank was the you. one that you did on paranoia, which I thought was fantastic because people don't talk about that. I mean, they do talk about it, but it's usually sort of like, oh, I felt paranoid sometimes or or whatever. But you really get into it and why people um, do get paranoid and what you can do to prevent it. So your podcast is very educational. And I do love that. And I also like the series that you do on the first time I bought legal weed. Because that's such a, it's so interesting to hear people's stories about that first time. And for some of us uh, out there listening, I'm not in that boat, luckily, but there's some who will s- still have that chance to experience legal weed, right? So hopefully it'll be something we can all enjoy very soon. So over 100 episodes, and you really do cover cannabis in terms of women's health. And I feel like that doesn't get talked about enough. I work in a dispensary and talking about health generally in relation to cannabis is a huge no-no. So was there something in particular, were you getting a lot of questions that you felt that this needed to be addressed? Definitely. And I think that learning how differently cannabis affects women because of our hormones has been something that I feel like we we as a society have really just scratched the surface of, I mean, we talk a little bit in our paranoia episode about how depending on the time of the month for a woman, the same cannabis can affect you 30% more than a different time of the month solely based on your hormones. And so if you know, you're smoking or or eating some cannabis that you loved a month ago, and then suddenly it just is having, you're having a really different experience. I want women to understand why that is and not just be afraid of cannabis with, you know, a giant C that you can take, you can have more control. You can put a framework around the way the cannabis can affect you and that will help you get better at it. You know, there are just some things like, Maybe you don't love to do yoga on the first day of your period, and so you don't schedule to go to the class with with friends on that day. And I feel like that's the same kind of concept that women can have with cannabis as we learn more and more about how it affects our bodies. Yeah, and I really do like that because I listened to that episode, and I ne- it never even occurred to me that my hormones could affect my experience when I'm using cannabis. And I'm sure that applies to smoking or eating edibles or no matter how you're taking it. So that's a really a really interesting point that you bring up in that particular episode, which I will sh- link to in the show notes because now I've talked about it a few times. But what are some of the top questions that you get for your show? Well, the number one question I think is, what should I buy? Um, followed closely by help me with stress, sleep, and sex. Right. Those are, are definitely kind of the three major things. And then chronic pain and and people have specific questions based on what's going on with them. But the what should I buy question is very real. And it's actually a little harder to answer than I wish that it were, um, especially depending on where you live. So I think that because I can't say, you know, go out and buy these shoes that are going to make your feet feel awesome and look amazing and anyone can get them across the country. That's one of the reasons why we've had to to talk more about the education at, and and try to educate women more because they may not be able to get the exact product that I would recommend, but if they can understand why I recommended it, like if you get anxious, try a strain that has higher CBD or lower THC, then they can go in when they're purchasing. However, they're 
buying it from uh, a dispensary, from a delivery service, and say, here are the parameters about the experience that I want to have. Help me get there. And so that's just where we are in cannabis right now. And, and that's really what I'm trying to do. And that totally makes sense because I find if you're in a place where you have access to legal cannabis, you walk into a cannabis store and the options can be pretty overwhelming as well. And of course, bed tenders can be very helpful, but it still can be a very intimidating experience if you're not super familiar with the different strains and what they can do for you. And I do love that you touch on the terpenes in particular, because a lot of the times it's the terpenes that will dictate the effects more than if it's an indica or sativa or the THC percentage, which still seems to be where a lot of stores are still set up in that manner. Like, what do you want? An indica or a sativa? You know, it's very black and white, but it's a lot more nuanced than that. So the fact that you're educating people on that particular piece is fantastic. Do you get many questions from men at all? Or is it pretty much just women? It's funny. Date? I've noticed an uptick in our, our listeners from men over the past few months, and I'm not sure what to make of it. I, um, I think that cannabis is universal and questions about cannabis are universal. And while there are some certain parts about cannabis that are specific to women, you know, our episode about the secret history of cannabis strains and understanding more about land race strains, I think, is pretty gender neutral. Um, so uh, the questions from men, you know, they're actually not that different. It's what should I buy? It's, you know, sleep, I think, for a lot of men, stress. Um, a lot of men actually ask me questions about, like, They'll they'll say something like, I used to love weed, but it it just like made me feel bad. And when I ask, it's usually around the anxiety and paranoia. And I think that there is sort of a cannabis culture that exists, and maybe it's more male, um, where you, know, you need to try the highest THC you possibly can and smoke an entire, you know, joint by yourself. And usually what I say is just try a lower THC try a three to one edible and see how that makes you feel because probably you just have too much THC in your system. And so I think that that might be sort of a, a demystifying that's happening more for like a modern man who's come back to cannabis after some time off where when there was no choice when what you were getting and it was just coming in a bag and that was what you got. Um, this is a whole new, new world. And I think that in general, my message always for people that have come back to cannabis after a break is start slow. Um, don't have a whole joint, try a couple of hits. It, you know, it might not be macho or sexy, but that's not what this is about. It's about feeling your best. And sometimes it just is going to take a little experimentation. Yeah, I do love that. Cause I do feel as well that the THC percentages are highly overvalued in the market. And I think that's just an extension from prohibition because when there's a lot of risk, they wanted the most potent stuff they could possibly make, but it's a whole new world out there now. And there's so many more options. And you're right. Sometimes if you haven't smoked in a while, one puff is all you need or two puffs and then see how you feel. Because I was one of those people that would get really paranoid and I didn't smoke for a long time. That's kind of why I discovered edibles. So I can really attest to that fact, but we do live in it like in a time where we're not supposed to talk about health issues really with regards to cannabis. Do you think we're being like overly cautious? Oh gosh. Um, <laughs> the way that I think about it a lot. And when people ask me for specific advice, I am lucky that I have met some incredible physicians and nurses who have very mainstream training and have taken it upon themselves to learn about cannabis. So that's always the first resource that I recommend. And I think that the, the second thing I usually say is that cannabis can solve some health issues that you have. So can the drugs that you're taking most likely, but cannabis generally will have fewer side effects. So and I feel pretty comfortable saying that. I mean, I'm not at a dispensary where I literally cannot give medical mm -hmm. advice and I'm not a doctor. I'm not trying to give medical advice. But I think what I'm trying to give is a um, is some of the anecdotes that I hear over and over that are starting to form a pattern. And then here are the experts and what they say. And then you're going to kind of have to to take it you know, upon yourself to go further. And there's always a moment I feel like in every single episode where I have to say, this is when I have to tell you, you're going to have to experiment. And it, I, I wish that I didn't have to say it, but I think I'm going to, I think we're all going to have to say that for a little bit longer and people need to be willing to try. And that's why I'm so, 
I so encourage people to start slowly because I don't want you to have, you know, what you think is a really small edible that's a hundred milligrams and you'll never touch cannabis again. Like just eat the ear of the gummy bear and start there. And because cannabis really, especially for women, I have endometriosis and so extremely painful cramps and other symptoms. And um, cannabis is such an incredible treatment for me. And if I had, you know, only some bad experiences to compare it to, I don't think I would ever think to take it, you know, for the first three days of my period, that would just never cross my mind. And so starting slowly, realizing that we are all in a new paradigm with a legal market, people who are extremely experienced in cannabis have only been in a legal market for as long as everybody else. So um, we're all learning. Right. And I think a lot of those physicians, physicians, sorry, are learning as well. And it is nice to see physicians who are being more proactive. I just have run into my husband's doctor in particular, definitely not open to cannabis, not open to talking about it. And unfortunately, that exists a lot. So people do turn to people in dispensaries to ask questions and we can't really talk about it. And I don't want to give particular medical advice either because I'm the furthest thing from a doctor. But like you, anecdotally, I do see a lot of patterns where people are coming in and finding the kind of relief that you're talking about. So um, can you talk about your own weed story and how you got like how you started using cannabis to for living? And <laughs> Sure. I, I think that it actually I mean, I've always liked weed. Um, I like how it made me feel. I found it really relaxing and I love to sort of um, think and be creative and feel uplifted. And and so I've always liked it. Um, but I, I always had to get it through a guy. And so I think legalization has been a whole new paradigm for me. Definitely. Um, I had a really bad accident. Um, and I ended up breaking 16 of my teeth. We actually did an episode <laughs> about this as part of our 100th, um, 100th episode celebration. And I had a lot of really, really challenging health issues after that, a lot of which were brought on by being over-medicated and having side effects from the medicine that was supposed to be helping. And at the time, I wasn't a particular cannabis consumer, um, and but I think that it opened me up to, wow, what the doctors are telling me actually made me worse. How could this be? Like learning to be more of an advocate for myself. And a few years after that, I wanted to have a baby. Um, my husband and I were trying and I was dealing with unexplained infertility and stepping into another system that is about really medicating women. And I think that those experiences opened up my eyes to this. There's more art here than science. And so I I was, um, and then cannabis became legal in California for adult use. And so I was seeing people that I knew and, and watching this industry grow with really well-meaning people who wanted to help consumers understand. And so I think all of those things were really, really integral to me being open to cannabis and bringing a lot of the rigor. I mean, I worked on Wall Street. I, I have, um, I love new industries. I love working in startups and that that's what my background is. But cannabis just has another layer of, of really helping people and also being new. And I'm so passionate about having women have a seat at the table in the industry. Right. That's fantastic. And uh, you know what, there's so many women who are benefiting from your show. So it's nice to hear that you've been able to turn what might have been a negative with an accident into something really positive. And you're bringing a lot of knowledge to people out there because there's so many kind of curious people now too with legalization. I mean, every day when I'm in the dispensary, it's like new people are coming in and saying they want to try it out because somebody told them or, or what have you. And it, it may not be for any particular health concern. It might just be because they're curious. And I always love helping those people. There was a woman that came into the store a couple months ago and she was in her eighties and she hadn't smoked weed since she was like a teenager. And she bought a little bit of weed and a little pipe and she wasn't buying it for sleep or anything like that. She just wanted to see what it was all about again. And I totally love that. So um, you do talk about, I think, on your web page as well, like you are using it for health concerns, but also that you like to relax in the evening. And I'd love to hear a little bit more about that because we do exist right now in a, in a place where we talk a lot about how cannabis can help for health. But a lot of people, it's almost like they don't want to talk about how they just like to get high in the evening to relax. Yeah, Um 
I love pre-COVID, one of my favorite things to do was stand outside of a dispensary and watch the amazing mixture of humans walk in because everybody is going to a dispensary, Uh, all ages. It's just, it's an amazing experience if you've got a coffee shop that you can sit next to for 20 or 30 minutes and watch the people go in and out. Um, I definitely use cannabis to relax and I absolutely used it during COVID (laughs) to relax. Uh, I have a three-year-old. I was living in a small apartment. San Francisco, where I live, was extremely locked down and, you know, we were all sort of going crazy. Um, I have a roof. uh, I had a roof deck. I actually just recently moved, but I had a roof deck and On Saturday night after my son went to bed, my husband and I would share a joint on the roof and it was like the best part of the week. And it was, we could sit outside, we got to sit and talk to each other and just kind of think and reflect on what was happening. And we tried a lot of pre-rolls, which we love to do and try different strains. And so um, I'm not sometimes the most fun person probably to get high with because I'm like, how do you feel? Uh, How's your body? How's your mind? You know, I have a thousand questions um, because I am always trying to think about the differences between men and women. What we found is sometimes strains that I really liked, my husband didn't and vice versa. And so sometimes we would have our own and, you know, I don't usually need that much. So a whole joint, I I like the little mini ones that we have in California now. Um, And yeah, it was, it was an amazing, amazing thing. Plus, you know, no hangover in the morning, which for any parent uh, <laughs> is an extremely important part of, of putting a substance in your body. And and I love to have usually one drink. I love an IPA. And so I could have one drink and split a joint with my husband and watch some TV. And, and those are some of the best memories of COVID. So I, it, it's a wonderful way to connect and relax. Right. I think a lot of people found uh, that cannabis saved them during COVID and some lockdowns as well. (laughs) And without it, I don't know how they would have managed myself included. Um, But I, yeah, I just feel like people don't talk about just the fact that they like to relax because it's fine to say you can enjoy that IPA or I like a glass of wine, but that's acceptable. But sometimes being like, I smoke a joint to relax still isn't as mainstream as it should be. And I, I think the more that people talk about it, the better because it just makes it more normal, right? It doesn't matter. There's people doing it from all walks of life. So um, you do talk a bit about edibles on your show, which I love. And you have a couple of recipes on there and some episodes regarding that. What is your own experience with edibles? I I love a three to one ratio. Um, for me, edibles that don't have CBD can be a little too overwhelming. I feel like I get a little edgy and it lasts for longer than I like. So I'm I'm super, super careful about that ratio and making sure that there is CBD. Um, I'm not a very good cook and especially not a very good baker, I have to confess. Um, but luckily, I live in California where are, there are some amazing products. And there's a company called Potly here that makes honey and olive oil. And so, you know, when um, my husband is the cook, thank you, JP, Um, (laughs) uh, you know, we'll drizzle a little bit of olive oil with with a mixture of, of THC and CBD onto some tomatoes or something. And so it's kind of a fun way to um, enhance the meal a little bit. And we, we did several shows with um, chefs who love to cook with cannabis. And it was fascinating for me to learn as a non-cook um, all of the different just ways that you can um, bring cannabis into your life. I think a lot of medical patients love to have a butter and you just have a little bit of butter on your toast throughout the day. And, and the pantry staple, whether you're cooking it or buying it, I think is just the most wonderful way to consume cannabis because the dosage you can control and it, you're just doing your regular stuff. So if you have any, um, stuff being like, you're just kind of living your regular life, um, and so I'm, I'm a big fan and, um, I think our next project is getting my husband to, to cook with cannabis. It's a little tricky with a three-year-old, but I heard a tip on your show from one of your listeners that when you, um, decarb, put it into a glass jar, yes. um, to keep the smell because I, I think the smell of cannabis is nice, but I don't really want my, my whole house to smell. So thanks for that tip. <laughs> yeah. So well, you're very welcome. That tip actually came from a listener. So thank you listener. But, um, Yeah, because that is a very pervasive smell. But if your husband's at all interested in learning to cook and you have somebody to make those edibles for you, I mean, 
best of both worlds, <laughs> for sure. Have you tried any of the cannabis drinks that are on the market? Because I have to admit, if you're in California, there I see so many amazing cannabis edibles brands that I'm very anxious to try some of them. Yeah, the cannabis drinks are, are so interesting. Um, and they're definitely popping up um, in a lot of different states. And they are such an easy form factor because people are already used to having a drink. And I think that anything that you can do to kind of bring cannabis into a social setting as we're all figuring out what social settings are again after mm -hmm. a long uh, a long break, um, I think is really fun. And I have tried them. Um, I, I like, you know, it's, I'm not sure that I've found the right one for me. I think that I still prefer the feeling that comes from like a three to one edible versus a cannabis beverage. Um, and I think that it might just be because most of them are a one to one ratio. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for a CBD and I need a little bit more CBD to really feel good. So hopefully as these cannabis beverages, as the market matures there, there will be more of a selection. Uh, I'm so happy to see that it's not just 100 milligram single drinks out there anymore, which was the way it was a few years ago, which is a little bit terrifying to me. I have one up in, I actually put it in my liquor cabinet and I have a little sign on it. Like this is a very potent drink. <laughs> Be careful. This is not just a regular drink. Um, so I think it's a, it's a dosing issue for me. And I think that we'll, we'll see that evolve. Yeah. Cause for, for a lot of people, the cannabis beverages actually don't, the onset is faster and it doesn't, the high doesn't last as long. So depending on the context, that can be a really useful little trick for a lot of people. But like you said, if you don't have the ratio that you're looking for, you know, they're maybe not ideal, but like you said as well, there's so many new drinks coming out onto the market along with everything else that I'm sure eventually there'll be something out there for you for sure. And those 100 milligram drinks do scare me as well. And it's funny because I'm in Canada and we have the opposite issue where there's nothing over 10 milligrams as far as edibles go. So a lot of people find those aren't enough, but I guess with legalization, you have to start somewhere. So that's where we're at. But um, there are a couple recipes too on your website. I think I'm going to get, I'm going to try because they look delicious. But uh, I guess the last thing to wrap up really is you take questions from listeners. Where's the best place for people to leave their questions? You can send us um, a message at hi, that's H-I at do the pot .com If you want to email us, we have Instagram at do the pot and you can DM us. Uh, we're on all the social platforms at do the pot. So whatever your favorite is, you can reach us there. Um, and yeah, we'd love to hear from listeners. We'd love to hear more first time legal weed stories. So if any of your women listeners want to share that, you can just send us a voicemail uh, to hi at do the pot .com, um, voice memo and, and we will, would love to create a show um, with your story because they it's just been so heartwarming like women really love this series and I think it's because everyone in the cannabis industry all the women that I've met really want this to to work for women um, I think that when when you found the cannabis that that connects with your body and makes you feel good it's it's such a gift and I think a lot of women want to share that well you have a lot of great stories from women and hearing other people's stories helped them realize that they weren't alone in this whole process, that the feelings that they were feeling are completely normal. And so it just makes it less scary, I guess, to go into that dispensary for, for the first time. Um, I guess, lastly, do you have any future plans for the podcast or anything coming up that you want to share? Um, well, we are really excited about this new series that we just launched on Tuesday called Weed Words, and there are lots more weed words coming. Our Thanksgiving weed word is actually, our episode for Thanksgiving is actually the munchies. Ah. So I'm super excited on, you know, the biggest food, American Thanksgiving, the biggest yes. uh, food day uh, of the year in America. We'll have a, an episode out about the munchies. And then our episode in December is about dispensaries. And so we'll kind of dig into all the things that, um, you know, some of the the themes that we've pulled out from the stories that we've gotten from women about first time legal weed and what their questions are. Um, in January, we're going to be talking about the word marijuana, which is a very complicated word that most people don't realize is complicated. So we're going to uh, unpack that one. And 
So that series has been really, really fun. Um, in November, we have um, some new episodes that'll be about the differences be- between buying cannabis in a medical, uh, in, in the U.S., in a medical state versus an adult use state. Another thing that is a lot more complicated than people realize necessarily until they kind of are like, oh, I heard in California you can buy weed. Like, maybe I'll go buy it in my state and then run into some roadblocks. So we're going to try and unpack that and help people understand that um, and then sleep. Sleep is a huge, huge issue. So um, we have a bunch of episodes that will be coming up talking about consuming cannabis to fall asleep, to stay asleep, and how not to feel groggy in the morning. Perfect. Yeah, the classic weed hangover, (laughs) which is still way better than an alcohol hangover any day. But yeah, that sounds fantastic. And I will link to these that episode 103 about the um, the paranoia because it was fantastic and the how to do the pot series as well in my show notes. And I just want to say thank you so much, Ellen, for coming on today. Ellen of How to Do the Pot. Check it out, everyone. If you have a woman in your life that you care about, she will love it. And the men too can learn a lot as well. So I really appreciate your time today, Ellen. Thank you so much for having me. You have a wonderful show. I'm really happy to be here. Oh, thank you. Isn't Ellen wonderful? I really hope that you enjoyed that episode, that conversation that I had with Ellen. I'm going to link to everything in the show notes that we spoke about so you can easily find it over there. And that will include a lot of the information from her website. When you go to her website, she has several categories, fun, well-being, health, and podcast. Under podcast is where you're going to find some of her series like New to Weed, Weed Words, which she mentioned in the show, some of the ones that she's done already, such as Paranoia and the ones that she has coming up, all sound very interesting. The There's a Grow Your Own series, and she also has the uh, First Time I Bought Legal Weed uh, series as well. And those ones are great, too, because they're also short five-minute stories from women in their first time experiences buying weed definitely worth a listen so much information on our website so i do encourage you to go over there and check it out and give a listen to the podcast whether you're can of curious or you're well versed when it comes to weed you can probably learn something from her work over at how to do the pot so i hope you're all making some fantastic edibles while you're listening to this show or listening to how to do, do the pot and until next week my friends stay high Are you tired of trying edibles that are inconsistent in strength and flavor? Attempting to figure out your tolerance? Do you want to take control of your edibles experience and find the optimum combination of factors that results in the best outcome? If so, this edibles journal is perfect for you. The Bite Me Edibles Journal provides a convenient and organized way for you to track and record your edibles experience, whether it's homemade edibles or store-bought. It includes 48 fillable pages It's sized 8.5 by 11 for plenty of writing space, includes information on calculating the potency of homemade edibles, and it was created by an edibles expert. Whether you're a seasoned edibles enthusiast or just starting out on your cannabis journey, the Bite Me Edibles Journal is an essential tool for anyone interested in enjoying their edibles to the fullest. Take control of your high life with this convenient and helpful resource. Add it to your Amazon cart today. Tap the link in the show notes.